Hello and welcome to our fresh new episode of Science Monitor, our weekly update on all that is happening in the field of science and technology in and around the country. We have lots to share with you in this episode. While we'll bring you the details in a while, let's take a look at the headlines first. Nation celebrates Technology Day, pledges scientific temper in day-to-day -day life. Biggest count of Asiatic lions concludes at Gir, shows favourable increase of population. Ancient nature of Mercury's magnetic field leaves researchers in awe. In our In Focus segment, we will discuss the important role of scientific methodology in conserving our heritage. And in our special segment today, we will see the spectacular sights of Earth as seen from space by Terry Witz. And now news in details. Development without science and technology is a far-fetched dream and societal harmony is impossible without scientific temper. The message was driven home once again as the nation celebrated Technology Day on 11th of May commemorating Shakti, the Pokhran nuclear test of 1998. Take a look. Eleventh May 1998, India carried out three successful nuclear tests at Pokharan in Rajasthan. With this nuclear test mission nicknamed as Shakti, India joined the League of Nuclear Power Nations. It was also on this day that first indigenous aircraft, Hansa 3, was test flown at Bangalore, and India performed successful test firing of the Trishul missile. In order to commemorate these technological feats, 11th May is celebrated as the National Technology Day in the country. Like every year, National Technology Day was celebrated enthusiastically across the country on 11th May. A major event was organized at Vigyan Bhavan in New Delhi to mark the occasion which was attended by the Secretary, Department of Science and Technology, Professor Ashutosh Sharma, Secretary, Department of Biotechnology, Professor Vijay Raghavan, Secretary, Ministry of Earth Sciences, Dr. Shailesh Nayak, DG CSIR, Dr. M. O. Gargalong, with several scientists, industrialists and students. Speaking in this event, the Union Minister of Science and Technology and Earth Sciences, Dr. Harshvardhan, complimented the Indian scientists for doing a good job and urged them to connect themselves to the lives of the people through their work. I use this occasion to place on record my personal appreciation and of course the appreciation of all my departmental colleagues for all those who received these awards. Since I knew the details of <coughs> the great work that they had done, because everything gets approved on the file, so I know about them. I wish I could describe each one of their achievements in detail here. They have done an extraordinarily exemplary job. And there are so many scientists like them who are working so hard all over the country. The event was chaired by CMD Biocon, Dr. Kiran Majumdar Shaw, who delivered a lecture on creating an ideal economy to innovate the future. On this occasion, Dr. Vardhan also felicitated Dr. Satyajit Mir, Director National Centre for Biological Sciences, Professor Manindra Agarwal, Department of Computer Science and Engineering, and Dean Faculty Affairs IIT Kanpur, and Professor Ajay Sood, Professor Department of Physics, IISC Bangalore for their contributions to science and for being elected to international science bodies. The minister also gave away the national awards for successful commercialization of the indigenous technologies to Messrs. Troika Pharmaceuticals Limited, Ahmedabad, for indigenous development of novel technology for topical drug deliver and its commercialization. The National Award for Technology Business Incubators for the year 2014 was presented to Startup Village Kochi in recognition of the remarkable work done in fostering the spirit of innovation and entrepreneurship and promoting an ecosystem for innovation-driven entrepreneurs. Innovative products supported by the Technology Development Board were launched and books, publications on issues related to innovation and entrepreneurship were released on the occasion. 
The event also saw lectures by other prominent personalities like Dr. V.K. Saraswat, former member for science and technology in the National Institution for Transforming India, who spoke on the theme of inclusive innovation for India. Gujarat's Gir National Park is known all over the world as the home of Asiatic lions. The sanctuary recently witnessed the largest census of Asiatic lions. And what is more, animal lovers and environmentalists have a reason to cheer as the number of Asiatic lions in the country has shown a favourable increase. Take a look. Large, majestic and proud, Asiatic lions, scientifically known as Panthera leopersica, are aptly called the king of the jungle. In the year 2000, the Asiatic lion was declared the most endangered large cat species in the world by International Union for Conservation of Nature. However, as the recent census reveals, India has succeeded in preserving and reviving these species. As the results of the 14th Lion Census 2015, the biggest ever conducted during 2nd to 5th May were declared. It was revealed that there are now 523 majestic beasts roaming the exotic Gir sanctuary as of now. The number of lions in the country has recorded a growth of 27% from 411 estimated in 2010 census. The number of lions in the country has recorded a growth of 27% from 411 estimated in 2010 census. Located in the state of Gujarat, Gir Forest National Park and Wildlife Sanctuary, also known as Sasangir, is the only preserve for the Asiatic lions in the country. Recently, about 11 wildlife experts from national and international agencies, including WCT, NBWL and SBWL, besides Aligarh Muslim University, along with 2,000 conservationists and volunteers, participated in the 14th Asiatic Lion Census which was billed as the biggest ever count of the Asiatic line conducted in Gi. The participants of the census scanned the 22,000 square kilometers of the reserve forest with the use of advanced technologies like GIS, GPS, digital cameras and camera traps. This time the most important thing is you know like we are using large number of you know uh, technology, robust technology like GIS, GPS, digital cameras, camera traps uh, so that you know we can reach up to the you know the accurate estimations the census also shows that there are 109 adult lions and 201 adult lionesses along with 213 sub adults and cubs distinguished from the african lions by the longitudinal fold of skin running along their bellies asiatic lions are recognized by their distinct mane they weigh from 160 to 190 kgs hunt animals much larger than their own size and live in groups which are called tribes. During the census, it was also observed that not only has the number of animals gone up, but also the territory in which it could be found had doubled. Mercury's magnetic field is as ancient as 4 billion years. This was the last and most crucial revelation of NASA's messenger probe as it crashed into the planet last month. While scientists always had a hint about the planet's magnetic field, the reason developed has proved it beyond any doubt. Let us see the report to know more. Mercury the smallest planet of our solar system and the one nearest to the Sun has always been a subject of interest for the space scientists across the world. In 2004, Messenger mission was sent by NASA to explore the planet. The Messenger successfully orbited Mercury from 2011 to 2015, well beyond its initial mission that ended in 2012 itself. The robotic spacecraft was used optimally by the scientists to gather loads of useful data. 
Recently, the mission came to its end when it crashed into the Mercury after the exhaustion of its propellants. But scientists are still busy studying the valuable data sent by the mission. Just before crashing into the planet, the mission revealed one more secret about the planet through the data collected by its magnetometer. Magnetometer is the instrument used to measure the strength and the direction of a magnetic field. Data on the magnetism of rocks on Mercury's surface was collected by the probe's magnetometer when it flew closer to the planet, at altitudes as low as 15 kilometers. The low altitude magnetic field measurements reveals evidence of magnetization of ancient crustal rocks on Mercury. The data shows that Mercury's magnetic field is almost 4 billion years old. Mercury's magnetic field is caused by a dynamo, that is large molten iron core that forms its center of mass. While Mercury's magnetic field is smaller than the Earth's magnetic field, it interacts with the solar winds to produce a magnetosphere. With this discovery, Mercury becomes the only other planet besides Earth in the inner solar system to have a magnetic field. The recent development has not only led to a novel revelation about this planet, but also added a new dimension to its study. And now it is time to take a short break. We'll be right back. Keep watching Science Monitor. Welcome back after the break, you're watching Science Monitor. Let us now have a look at some important science and technology activities happening in India and abroad in our next segment, Science Express. According to the reports from the Russian Space Agency, the unmanned Russian spaceship Progress 59 that was running cargo to the International Space Station has fallen from its orbit and has burned up over the Pacific Ocean. The capsule was loaded with more than 3 tons of food, fuel and supplies for the station crew. The spacecraft was launched on April 28 from the Baikonur Cosmodrome in Kazakhstan, shortly after which the control room lost communication with the spaceship. Reasons for the technical failure are being investigated, while the next delivery to the space station is planned by SpaceX's Dragon cargo ship on 19th June. Liberia has been finally declared Ebola-free on 9th May, 42 days passed after the last Ebola case was confirmed on 28th March. The country was struggling with an year-long epidemic of Ebola. While Liberia is chairing the declaration, President Ellen Johnson Sirleaf visited the Ebola treatment units and congratulated the healthcare personnel involved in the battle against the disease. Now comes the challenge, the challenge of working with our two neighboring countries to make sure they reach the same level of progress that we have reached. And already, we have commenced the process taking a regional approach, reaching across borders to share information, to share experiences, to share talent. We are going to intensify that effort because we know that until they are free, totally free, we are not free. However, medical charity Medicine Sans Frontiers and the UN has urged vigilance while the outbreak was also extinguished in neighboring Guinea and Sierra Leone. According to estimates, more than 4,700 people died in Liberia during the epidemic and three times as many people were infected. NGO Prayas Team Environment Charitable Trust, with an aim to provide respite to thirsty birds in summer, has recently launched an Android phone-based application in Surat. The app called the Bird Tap enabled the users to procure earthen water pots from the registered centers and install them at several places in their houses and streets. बहुत ही अच्छा रिस्पांस है और लोग एप्लीकेशन की मदद से अपने नजदीक में सेंटर में ढूंढ के जा रहे हैं और दिन के करीबन 700 से 800 जैसे पॉट्स डिस्ट्रीब्यूट हो रहे हैं और टारगेट है हमारा कि करीबन 15 से 20 और हमारा ये टारगेट है कि सूरत शहर में अगर किसी पक्षी को प्यास लगे तो उसको पानी ढूंढने में 50 से 100 मीटर से ज्यादा उड़ना ना पड़े। 
The application sends a reminder to people to not forget to refill the pots every day and allows users to submit feedback. According to the NGO, the app has received very positive response and around 700 to 800 pots are being distributed every day. In a major step towards creating awareness about the disease, a breast cancer awareness and checkup campaign was organized in Vadodara city on 10th May marking Mother's Day. The event was organized by the Sujal Charitable Trust. The trust also proposed to fund the entire cost in case a woman was diagnosed with cancer and was unable to meet the expenses. The campaign focused on removing the inhibitions of Indian women in getting themselves checked for signs of breast cancer. The campaign also encouraged women to diagnose themselves at home on a regular basis and undergo a yearly clinical checkup. About 112 hospitals, 550 doctors and paramedics and around 4,000 volunteers joined the initiative. A series of fresh earthquakes shook Nepal on 12th May. The tremors were felt in many states of India besides China and Tibet. The earthquake also led to deaths and casualties in the state of Bihar. On the same day, a quake was also felt in a region of Afghanistan. After the fresh tremors, Terry has stressed on the need to evolve a joint and coordinated response strategy by the countries of the Himalayan region. It also stated that as the first step, the SARC agreement on rapid response to disasters, which was approved in 2012, needs to be ratified for implementation. Monuments represent our heritage, and heritage is what we leave behind. This form of heritage not only reveals history, but also plays an important role in the nation's current economy. No wonder it is of utmost importance to conserve and manage our monuments. And this is not an easy task, but science makes this possible. Did you know that scientific methodology plays a crucial role in preservation of ancient monuments and artworks? In our segment in focus today, let us see how experts use scientific principles to restore the beauty of centuries-old structures. Taj Mahal, the wonder that attracts millions of travellers every year to India. Built in 1631 by Emperor Shah Jahan, as a memorial to his wife, Mumtaz Mahal, the majestic minarets and the beautiful marble domes speak of everlasting love. But during the 90s, it was recognized that the marble of this world heritage site was yellowing because of the toxic fumes from nearby Mathura refinery. But thanks to the scientific techniques available today, Restoration of Taj Mahal to its original glory has been possible. Such is the power of scientific methodology in conservation of heritage. From Taj Mahal to Kutub Minar, Caves of Ajanta, Meenakshi Temple, Khajuraho, Great Stupa of Sanchi and Jahaz Mahal. India has a rich history and varied heritage. And scientific methodology known as conservation science or heritage science has played a huge role in preservation of these monuments. Gradually, the science has entered quite significantly into the field. So, the, when we are to conserve anything, the first thing is to know the object. Know the object means the nature of the object. And for that, science comes in a broad way. For example, we need to know uh, the pigment which, which has been used, the binding medium which has been used. Where the science comes, like we need to examine with, say, ultraviolet light with infrared light, then x-rays are also being used. Then there are now very quite so sophisticated equipments to know the basic composition of the material. Conservation science or heritage science is specialized interdisciplinary science involving principles of chemistry, physics, biology, engineering, architecture and much more, which aims at preserving ancient monuments and works of art and increase their aesthetic appeal. The major thrust uh, uh, is scientific investigation. I mean, like people think that the restoration of art is not the work of artists. It is not the same. On the contrary, it is hard science, you know, uh, chemistry, physics, biology, everything is involved in this field. Heritage sites and monuments are generally afflicted by a host of natural and man-made factors that harm them. 
Some of the common causes include climatic conditions, moisture, solar radiation, geological and mineralogical defects which develop during the genesis of rocks, growth of moss, lichen, algae, fungi and higher plants on a monument, droppings of birds and bats, suspended particulate matter, chemical pollutants, dust, etc. While clay-based monasteries of Leh Ladakh are affected by the extreme cold conditions, monuments of coastal areas face the problem of salt efflorescence. Hence, conservation strategies adopted are many, depending on the geographical location. As a general practice, experts in the science of heritage conservation first study the physical and chemical characteristics of building materials and the substrate. After proper diagnosis of conservation problems, they deploy appropriate scientific methods using suitable chemicals, solvents and materials. After knowing the condition, then only we decide what type of treatment should be given. Because here again, while we give the treatment, it is not the normal type of thing that the stronger the better. It's not. Here one will have to see the condition and accordingly the treatment is given. It is always taken care that the treatment or restoration which we are giving should be suitable to it. It should be slightly weaker than the object. Because it's the law of nature is that it is always the weaker which suffers. So if we make a strong type of a conservation, the weaker which is the original object, it may suffer. Use a very dilute mixture of ammonia solution and a non-ionic detergent to remove buildups. Use a biocide like bleaching powder slurry in aqueous medium and 2 to 3% aqueous solution suspension of sodium pentachlorophenate to remove micro vegetation etc. are some of the common techniques used. Other interesting conservation techniques include mud pack cleaning which makes use of a chemically enhanced bentonite clay to remove stubborn buildups and deposits on marble surfaces like those in Taj Mahal. Besides calcareous deposits, the deposits of carbon black soot, stains of oil, red ochre, paints etc. are cleaned using suitable formulations. Archaeological Survey of India oversees the scientific preservation of monuments of the country. Using expert technological knowledge in collaboration with other scientific institutes. Intech was established in 1984 and uh, with a mandate to uh, conserve art, conserve the heritage of the country, which is not being uh, looked after by, which is neglected basically and not does not come under the purview of the Archaeological Survey of India or the state archaeological. Uh, uh, offices and the societies. There are various divisions which were established and uh, one of the major divisions is this division which is the Art and, Art and Material Heritage Division and uh, it has got seven laboratories all over India and collectively we are working towards conservation and restoration of artifacts. These artifacts range from textiles, from paper manuscripts to paintings, wall paintings, sculptures and anything that can make a work of art basically. While ASI takes care of the natural factors that affect our monuments, it is in our hands to prevent vandalism of these structures. Our heritage is our pride and we share the responsibility to save and preserve it for our future generations. The Himalayan peaks are amazing at sunset. Mount Kanchenjunga in sunlight while the other peaks fall into shadow. This is the tweet by NASA astronaut Terry W. Words who has been in space since December 2014. In our special segment today, we will see how Earth looks spectacular from the space through the images and videos of astronaut Terry Witts. We all would agree that Earth is a beautiful planet to live in. But have you ever wondered how our Mother Earth looks from the space? NASA astronaut Terry W. Wirtz has been tweeting pictures and videos of the Earth as seen from the space. We can see the stunningly spectacular view of the Earth in these tweets. On Mother's Day, astronaut Terry Wirtz dedicated the image of a sunrise to all the mothers of the world. He has also posted breathtaking videos of tropical storm Anna looking up the east coast of the USA. Sulu Sea fishing boats, Super Typhoon Noul, 
as it approaches the Philippines and thunderstorms near Indonesia. Wirtz has been flying over India for the past week and has chronicled his journey through photographs and videos on his Twitter page. Here's how remarkably beautiful India looks from above. We can see the image of bright city lights of Chennai in one of his first posts about India on 6th May. Some of his interesting tweets with images and videos on India goes like this. India sparkles from Delhi and Ahmedabad all the way to Chennai, tweeted words on 6th May. On 7th May, the tweet was, Moonlit clouds over southeast India coastline with Chennai, Bangalore and Hyderabad. Words also documented his day and night flight over India in a beautiful video that captures flowing Ganges on 8th May. He tweeted, Day flight over India with the Ganges drifting by on the left. And later at night, India night flight along the east coast. On 9th May, Words played Name the City, showing Ahmedabad and Chennai in all its shining glory capturing the majestic beauty of a lightning storm that lit up India's skyscrape, Wirtz expressed his awe at the view and tweeted on 9th May, Massive lightning storm over India, a majestic performance that inspires awe and respect. Teddy W. Wirtz is a NASA astronaut who has been in space since December 2014. He has assumed command of the International Space Station as the commander for Expedition 43. He was flown to space on November 23, 2014, aboard Soyuz TMA-15M, which successfully docked at the International Space Station roughly six hours later. Well, that is all for this episode of Science Monitor. Do tell us how do you like our program. You can send your feedback and suggestions. Our email ID is news at vigyanprasar.gov.in. You can also write in to us at Vigyan Prasar C24, Kutub Institutional Area, New Delhi 110016. Well, that is all for today. We'll be back with fresh new stories on science and technology again next week. Till then, stay tuned to Rajasabha TV and think scientific. Bye-bye. <laughs>